Hey everyone, today we are so excited to have you with us and we are going to be talking about how to make an extra thousand dollars per month. Balancing building a successful business and being a superstar mom is hard. And yet in today's digital world, it's more common than ever. The question becomes, how do we successfully grow a business and children at the same time? Join us for a candid conversation as we share our insights into marketing and motherhood. I'm Angela Reeder. And I'm Jessie Valle. Welcome to the Marketing Moms Podcast. Okay, so today, an extra $1,000 a month. I am excited to talk about this. And it was fun coming up with the different ideas too. Yeah. I feel like there are some on the list that are very common, but some you Mm -hmm. may not have thought about. Uh, This all is keeping in mind that you already have a job. Right. (laughs) And you're already making money somewhere. This is just a, hey, can we make an extra thousand dollars on the side? Can we make an extra thousand dollars a month to supplement our income yeah so these are not yeah, this, full-time jobs i mean some of them could be full-time you could turn some them into them full-time jobs yes yeah definitely and i think especially you know lately with you know everything going with the economy i think people are starting more to look at where they can kind of you know just bring in a little bit extra yeah this is a really sad realization or a sad thing to admit but when I was teaching I found out that oh like a large percent of teachers had side gigs yeah yeah it's surprising how many teachers have second Mm -hmm. jobs side gigs yeah like someone was like oh that that teacher you know bags groceries at Kroger on the weekends yep we've got some of those yeah Uh, I it Sometimes it makes me sad that whatever you choose to do for a profession isn't enough for your living expenses, yeah. but that is a rant for another day. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a different soapbox. <laughs> that's a different soapbox. So this one in particular, since we are moms with businesses, that's one other thing that, that we've mentioned from the beginning that when you have a business, it doesn't have to be your full-time thing. Mm-hmm. It could most certainly be a side gig. Yeah. For sure. So, all right. Our first one is freelance work. And that is such a wide open blanket statement. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It is. Yes. And for some of us, like for me, uh, freelance work is your full time job. Mm hmm. Um, so that, you know, again, this, these could be full-time jobs, but they're also good for side jobs. And there are a lot of places that you can go to like find jobs, you know, there's Fiverr and Upwork Mm -hmm. and things like that, where you can go and post jobs and, and take different jobs to earn a little extra income. Yeah. Like I would say that at the end of the day, we wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that. Our whole thing is you could do it on your own. There Mm -hmm. are ways you don't have to pay a commission to places like Fiverr. But if you really (laughs) wanted to just make a little extra money every month, you could. Yeah. Because it does take a lot of weight off of the whole running the business part. It does. Yeah. And I will say I was surprised. I was on Fiverr recently uh, for something. And I was surprised at how many like I don't want to call it high end services, but like mm-hmm. more complex services were being mm-hmm. offered on there, like app development and, you know, mm. different things like that, where, you know, used to it was kind of like, I'll put your PDF together for five bucks. <laughs> like, yeah. Now there's more of like, I will build you an app for $400. Like, right. so it's not, you know, if you have skills that are, you know, not necessarily, I don't know entry level I guess you would call it Mm -hmm. yeah um you can still look on places like that like there are still people looking for services Mm -hmm. like that on places like Fiverr um but also there is a lot of the you know I'll put together a pdf for you it's quick it's easy it takes you like 10 minutes you know you get paid for it and that's really nice 
and yeah. for people like me who suck at putting together PDFs, it's nice to just hire somebody to do that. Yeah. I would also say that when it comes to, hey, what well, what could I do? I mean, you could write, you could graphic mm-hmm. design, you could web development, you could yep. answer emails, <clears throat> customer service, like literally – there are so many, especially since the pandemic, there are so many businesses looking to mm-hmm. expand in the online world and they need help. Yeah. Yeah. And more and more businesses that are looking to hire freelancers as opposed to employees. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Which One is, thing, again, a whole nother soapbox. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. I would also say that one of the best things you could do if you're looking to make an extra $1,000 a month is honestly... Create a thousand dollar package, or two, yeah. or or a five hundred dollar package, and sell it to two mm-hmm. people. But if you yeah. just had a thousand dollar a month package, sold it to one person, you're set. There's your yeah. extra thousand dollars a month. Now, I take that back a little bit because if someone is paying you a thousand dollars, you're not actually getting a thousand dollars. You're probably right. getting like seven hundred. In fifty right. to eight hundred dollars, depending on what your tax rate is. So, as a business owner, you always have to think about that, and it really, really sucks. Not gonna lie, yes, it sucks a lot yeah. to be like, I earned that thousand dollars, and the government's like, ha, nope, you ha, only earned no. seven hundred. Deal. Yeah. <laughs> like, again, <laughs> um, that aside, um, one of the things that I I find really interesting about freelance work, and we might talk about this one like the most because this is the one we're most passionate about. Um, yeah. But one of the things I love about freelance work is that there are so many different options. You can find something you enjoy, which is what a lot of people think about with a job is I'm not going to find something I actually like. Right. I'm going to just do something I hate. No, like if you are really into social media, which Angela and I are not, <laughs> right? <laughs> you can have a $1,000 a month package creating posts, posting posts, like writing the captions and the hashtag research and all the things for one company client. Yeah. $1,000 is not off base for something like that. Or let's say that you are really good at writing. You like to write. Guess what? You can be a ghost writer and you can write for blog post articles with certain, I mean, there's going to be certain things like how many words, how many backlinks, all these things. Like there are going to be requirements, but I'm just saying you could find someone that would pay you a thousand dollars a month to write some blog posts. Yes. Yeah. And absolutely. If you're listening to this and you're just like, what? I don't, I don't know if I believe that. Just search Google. You can find people and look at their packages because a lot of freelancers have different packages that you can purchase and just take a look at it. It's quite interesting. Uh, It is. Um, And to kind of go along with that is like virtual assistant type services that you can offer. Yeah. That one's more of like you have a package of a certain number of hours because the mm-hmm. tasks vary so much. Yeah. But, it, oh, well, what would a virtual assistant do? Well, they could, you know, jump in and fix things when they're not right. They can maybe answer some customer service things, create some um, standard operating procedures, make sure yep. things are optimized. Um, they can set up a scheduling app like virtual assistants do so many different things we can't really name them because they're just kind of a an ad hoc thing every day is different so if you like variety a virtual assistant might be for you yeah yes (laughs) unlike a like a web developer i know that you and i talked about that before angela because angela and i both know code and, and we're both web web developers um sometimes you sit down and you're just like this is the same thing over and over again. Right. And it's this very is the boring. exact same thing I did yesterday. <laughs> exactly. So if you're the opposite, actually, to be honest, sometimes I like the monotony. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So if you like that, then maybe something more technical is for you because it is very, this is the same thing every day and this is how we do it. Okay. 
So that that's all I got on, on freelance work. There's so much more I could say. And in fact, I'm pretty sure we have a, other episodes about I it, think we do. Maybe. At this point, after 100 episodes, you've got to be like, I'm sure we've talked about it at I'm some sure point. I'm sure we've talked about that years. somewhere. <laughs> you know what? And if we haven't, we will. <laughs> yes. Because we have a lot more to say. Okay. The next thing on our list is online tutoring, which could also turn into creating online courses or being an mm-hmm. online coach. And I'm saying online, but technically you could do this in person as in well. In person. Yeah. Because there are different tutoring places, uh, physical places that you could tutor some yeah. kids locally. I used to right. I I used to teach a, a girl Spanish once a week after school. So I mean yeah. like just little skills like that. Yeah. And that's a, you know, if you're looking for somewhere, there are like, if you're trying to do it online, there are platforms for that. Mm -hmm. But locally, you can check in local Facebook groups and different things like that. I've seen posts in some of our local groups where it's kind of like, I, you know, can tutor your kid in reading or math or whatever. So. It also reminds me of like, having relationships with certain organizations because yeah. uh, my daughter brought home a flyer about piano lessons. I was like, how do the other piano teachers in the area feel about that? They're jealous. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you did to weasel your way in there, but kudos to you. Good for you. <laughs> um, we also mentioned online courses and coaching because there are so many different skills people are trying to learn, not in a traditional university or taking traditional classes. And maybe you know a ton about a certain skill that you could put together a, an online course and and sell it. Now, the yeah. one thing that's a little more difficult about online courses are depending on the skill, they may not, it may not you may not sell it for very much, which means you got to go right. for volume. And that means marketing, a lot of marketing. Mm-hmm. And so if yeah. that's not really your thing, maybe it's not the right route for you. But another thing that you could do instead is take on one-on-one or small group coaching. And that typically pays more because yeah. it takes more of your time because you actually have to sit down with them a certain number of times. Yeah. But it's possible. So our next suggestion is selling products on Amazon, eBay, uh, Etsy, Etsy, any of those types of Mm -hmm. sites. And I know there are a lot of people, drives my husband crazy, but I know there are a lot of people that go to rummage sales or pick up things for free off of Facebook Marketplace and then sell those either at rummage sales or on the Marketplace sites. I think it's so cute that you call them rummage sales. (laughs) I call them a garage sale. I don't know about you guys, but I've never heard of rummage sales. So I think that Angela lives in the boonies. I I do live in the boonies. And we do sometimes call them garage sales here, but I might. Or I guess people sometimes call them yard sales too. In my area, we call them garage sales. Yeah, Yeah, we call them (laughs) rummage sales. (laughs) I'm sorry. To me, the word rummage sounds like you're from the 1800s. (laughs) (laughs) Well, (laughs) we're just a little behind here. (laughs) You better go fix that uh, wheel on your covered wagon. wagon. (laughs) Someone's going to die of dysentery. (laughs) All right. Now we're thinking about the Oregon Trail. (laughs) Yep. Now now I'm dating myself. Okay. (laughs) Okay, so back to selling products on eBay, Amazon. So uh, I know that some people will also talk about drop shipping, Mm -hmm. which is a really cool concept. It's you find a place where you could wholesale something. Maybe you white label it or you can add logos or things like that. And then you turn around and sell it on somewhere like Etsy, eBay, Amazon. And then when people buy, then the product's created and shipped by someone else. You're just the middleman. You're the one doing the marketing. You're the one that's like connecting everything to make sure that the orders go through. 
but you don't have to keep inventory in your house. Now, yeah. that's very um, enticing to a lot of people. However, nowadays, it's a lot harder to get going and make good money doing it. it you yeah. know, several years back, it was the thing and people were making a lot of money doing it. But now, not so much. Yeah, I, but it, um, it's still a viable option to make some side money. It is. I used to do it. That was one of my first online uh, kind of business things was drop shipping. And that was when it was kind of the cool thing to do. And it was a little bit easier. But yeah, it's, you know, you, there's a lot of legwork to it that you wouldn't think going through, you know, reaching out to different companies and setting up different, um, you know, contracts with them for wholesaling or, you know, so that they will ship to the people that are ordering from you. Um, but there are things like that also for um, like prints. If you make art, you can do like a print on demand service that will email or that will mail your prints out to the people that buy from you without you having to actually like go through the process of making the prints and filling out the things and doing the shipping. Um, there are companies that will do that for you. And I've seen a lot of like smaller artists uh, be really successful with that. That's really cool. It's not something I would have thought about. Huh. I like it. <laughs> um, or then there's always the people that just have like your standard cricket machines and all those things. And, you know, I think a lot of people get scared when selling on things like Etsy. Yeah. To be like, oh, there's so many people doing this. How am I going to stand out? Well, you can. Yeah. Think about your product images and what makes your stuff special. And yes, it does take a little bit of marketing, which scares a lot of people. But yeah. I go on Etsy all the time for gifts. Yeah, me too. So like homemade boxes with soaps, like homemade soaps and bath bombs and and little things that you think, oh, nobody really, you know, no, they do. I'm not going to sit around. Yeah, people are there know. looking for it. Yeah. Actually, one time in high school, I sat down for a few hours with my mom and we made homemade bath salts. We added color, we added scents, and you know what? It was really fun and really cool. But guess what? Now as an adult, yeah. No. I'm going to <laughs> Etsy to buy it. Like so if you want to spend the extra time making these custom bath salts, people like me will buy them. Yes. <laughs> oh, anyway. Okay. The next one is affiliate marketing, which, you know. I would say almost all of these, and that's just part of being a business owner, is that you're actually a marketer. You have to yeah. market your stuff. That's just reality. So these are not things that you can be like, I'm just going to do it. And like, that's that. Like you do have yeah. to put a little bit of work into finding people to buy whatever it is you're selling, whether it's a service or an item or anything. Um, but affiliate marketing, for those of you that don't know, is when you – market and sell someone else's product. So there are actually platforms that you can go on to to look and search products. Mm -hmm. You pick one you like and you try to sell it. And every time you sell it, you earn a commission. Yeah. Um, but there are also like, it doesn't have to necessarily be going to a site like it could be like Angela and I for example there are several programs softwares that mm -hmm. we use that we are a part of the affiliate program so when we give people a link to go set up a free trial or go buy it it's tied to us so if they begin yeah. paying for it we get a little bit of a kickback I remember there was a long period of time where I was making like eight dollars and seventy cents a month yeah. <laughs> It's so dumb, but I remember the exact amount. Is eight dollars and seventy cents a month because someone signed up for a program using my link? <laughs> yes, 
Yeah, I had one of those once where it was I, for a few months I was getting like three dollars and some. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, yes, I get another coffee Woo-hoo! this month. Like I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going out to Starbucks or Scooters. Yep. Like I'm getting some coffee <laughs> with my eight dollars and seventy cents. But yes, obviously you could do it on a, on a grander scale. That was yes. without me really trying. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it also helps, like, for example, um, I'm going to put Angela on the spot. As a web developer, oh, you yeah. tell people what platform they should be using, and then you give them their link. So not only are you setting up their new website, for example, you're using your affiliate link, so you get a little bit of a kickback yeah. for recommending a certain platform. And you're not yeah. doing it to get the kickback. You're recommending it because it's the best. But right. It's just really nice that you also get recognition by the company to say, I brought you that customer. Yeah. That's what affiliate marketing is, really. Yeah. And a lot more companies are starting to offer things like affiliate marketing because they're recognizing that, you know, things like social media influencers or just people that are in the space um, that other people go to, you know, like you said, with web developers, a lot of times they'll you know, people will come to you and be like, which platform should I be on? Which hosting should I have? Where should I get my domain? Um, They're recognizing the value of that sort of, you know, mm, asynchronous marketing. (laughs) Yeah. The company is not doing the marketing, but they're, they're recognizing the value of that. And Mm -hmm. a lot of them are starting to add better affiliate programs. Yeah, for sure. All right. Another one. Now this one's a little more I would say modern. (laughs) I don't know, though. Renting out a spare bedroom on Airbnb. (laughs) Now, I kind of wrap this one also up with like not necessarily renting out a spare room or maybe your whole basement is set up as a separate apartment. But also like if you want to invest in some real estate and rent that out. A lot of people now, instead of just having a rental property for someone to just you know, rent long term, they're right. renting it out on places like Airbnb or oh, what's that other one called? Verbo. Yeah, Verbo. Where where it's like less long term. Yeah. So side note on the Verbo and sort of tied into marketing. So my kids are on YouTube quite a bit. And for some reason, the Verbo commercials or ads come up on like the kids channels a lot. <laughs> All the time don't know why um but they're always you know it's this family and they're having fun and it's Ross, mm-hmm. this is verbo so my kids all know my my younger two they know verbo they recognize it that's marketing no idea no idea what it is uh-huh. they have no idea what it is what it does they like they talk about it like it's a thing like we need a verbo <laughs> like, yeah and, like, and it's so funny to me because the first couple times I saw the ads I was the same way I was like I don't understand what they're marketing like I don't understand what these commercials are for I had to actually go look it up which I guess is kind of good marketing like it made me go look but it was so funny and that I and I love it that like all of the kids know verbo because it shows up on their stuff <laughs> Do you but remember none of them have any idea what it does? <laughs> this might date us again that we even remember this, but do you remember the first Aflac commercials? Yes. Literally for like two years, nobody knew mm-hmm. what the heck they did. Yeah, no, nobody had any idea what it, everybody knew the commercials, everybody knew the company, nobody had any idea what they did. Cute duck, no clue Cute duck. what they do. Yes. <laughs> so I would say that nowadays I applaud Aflac for being like, you know what? We got people's attention, but now we need to actually tell them what we do. <laughs> right. Yeah. Eventually you have to tell them what we do. But yeah, that was that did kind of make me think of that. I just thought it was really funny that I was like, I mean, good marketing. My kids all know the company. They just don't have any idea what it does. <laughs> mm-hmm. And maybe that's the point for a ch- right. for a child. A child right. is now connected to them, but it's up to the mm-hmm. adult to book it. So <laughs> Right, yeah. Now I have to listen to them tell me all about how much we need a Verbo because it looks really exciting. <laughs> exactly. And guess what? Maybe you'll indulge their wish someday. Right. <laughs> well, you could be the person on the other side of that Verbo. 
Yes. <laughs> renting out your renting out some extra space. So yep. that's definitely a way you could make some extra money uh, every month for sure. Yeah. Okay. I like the next one. It feels more practical because like, hey, buy a house and rent it out is not right. necessarily always not practical, practical. <laughs> especially when you have a bunch of young children you're trying to support. Yeah. Now this one, you could include the kids. Pet sitting or dog walking or things like that. Like if you really love pets and you love dogs and you love being outside, like if you're going to go outside for a walk, you might as well get paid to take someone's dog with you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I actually know a young lady that is in college and that's her like job. Her college job is pet sitting and dog walking and, and taking care of other people's animals. Yeah. So <clears throat> literally the people that live across the street from me uh, do something similar. They are dog sitters. Mm -hmm. So we've got people dropping off and picking up their dogs all the time. But for them, it's they could watch them during the day while their owners are at work, kind of like doggy sitting. Yeah. Or they also have a package where you could leave your dog overnight and that mm -hmm. costs more. So yeah. let's say you charge, I don't know, $30, $35, something like that to hold someone's dog overnight. Like you only, you need to do that like once a night <laughs> for <Yeah>. a month. <laughs> but if you yep. have multiple dogs, especially on the weekends when owners go out of town, that could be a yeah. Friday night and a Saturday night. And then if you have multiple dogs, like you could only have to do it on the weekends as long yeah. as you take multiple dogs and and boom, you've you've now made a a thousand dollars, an extra thousand dollars a month for what? For playing with some dogs every weekend? Yeah. <laughs> if you're a dog person, that sounds really great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that would be really fun. Yeah, I just think that that's a little more outside the box that people don't necessarily think about. Right. Um, we think about oh, like people need. I don't know, babysitting uh, like one day a week or something like that. Or, hey, maybe this owner of a dog has to go out of town once a month, mm -hmm. but they don't know what to do with their dog and they don't want to kennel them up. Right. Like, cool. That's you. I'll take your dog yep. for the weekend. Yeah. It's like being a grandparent. You get to play with them and then you send them yeah. home to mom and dad. Send them home. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, I just think that that's brilliant. I love it. So, and it doesn't necessarily have to be just dogs. Like, I remember, I'm kid you not, I used to have a fish and I literally drove 30 <laughs> minutes to my parents' house with this fish bowl on my lap because we were going on vacation. I'm like, I don't know who's going to feed my fish. Yeah. But same thing, like you could just offer. Yeah, any pet really. Yeah, like, oh, you need me to come in and feed your fish once a day? Or cats are a lot easier because I, I, I've taken care of my sister's cat several times. And yeah, I just go in there once or twice a day, see the cats alive, snap a picture for yeah. my sister. That's the other thing is like, snap a picture, <laughs> yeah. send it to her, um, feed the cat, play with it a little bit. And that's that. You know, it depends yeah. on the, the animal. But even something like I used to have guinea pigs. So guinea pigs, rabbits, gerbils, hamsters, like you could be the one, even if it's, hey, I'm going to be the one to come in once a week and change the cage. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I would love to pay someone to do that. Yes. That's the worst part of owning those pets. Definitely. And I think summer is a good time if you're looking to start something like that too, because people are going on vacation you know, kids are out of school. They want to be, you know, we want to go for a day trip or we want to go two or three days to here and there and we need somebody to watch the animals. Like, Yeah. Cool. I mean, I just, I'm saying, yes, that's a very viable mm -hmm. option to make a little bit of extra money on the side. And the really cool thing about a lot of these gigs is you can choose how much or how little you do them and when. Yeah. So let's <clears throat> say that you don't have time on the weekends. You only have time on the weeknights. Cool. There are things you could do on the weeknights. So, all right. What about, speaking of, next one, delivery driving. This could be, um, this could be like an Uber. So you're like delivering people, like a taxi yeah. service, or it could be 
you know, grocery shopping, picking up, you know, what is that? Instacart. You go shopping for them and you take it to their house. Or it could just be you work for on the side for a certain place where you just, yeah, Grubhub. Yeah. Something like that where you just go grab the food and take it to them. Speaking of being out in the boonies, I remember when places or when things like Grubhub and Uber Eats came to our area and everybody was so excited because for the longest time we always felt like that was just a big city thing. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Now we have it here. It's like everywhere now for sure. Why? Because even in small towns, there are people willing to go pick up your food and take it to you for you to pay them. Yeah. And especially for, you know, like for people like me, you know, families used to order pizza because you could have it delivered. And now it's like, you can have anything delivered. Yeah. And if you're stuck at home with a bunch of kids or something, you don't want to drag everybody out. That can be really helpful. Yeah, for sure. Or like you guys are really busy into something. You can still have something delivered, which is really nice. I know my brother-in-law, um, he used to drive Uber on the evenings and weekends only when he wanted to make a little extra cash. So it's definitely something that you can choose when and how much you decide to dedicate to it. Yeah. I I think that, yeah, for a lot of people, the flexibility of delivery driving is very enticing. Yeah, for sure. And last but not least, Mm -hmm. yard work, which Mm -hmm, is another mm -hmm. thing that comes up a lot during the summer. Mowing, flower bed cleanup, mulching, pressure washing, gutter cleaning. Um, We, our house got some sort of like algae or something on it. So we had to like scrub the side of the house, stuff stuff like that. Just kind of random things can be an opportunity for you to make a little bit of extra money, um, especially in places where there are people who either don't have the time or maybe don't have the ability anymore, like older people, things like that, that can't quite get out as easily to do some of the things like leaf blowing and things like that. Yeah. That reminds me, there's this, (laughs) my mother. Um, there's this, this guy on YouTube and of course he is now <laughs> entranced my mother. Yes. So she showed me, it's this guy who drives around town looking for like the worst lawn overgrown weeds, awful imaginable. And he goes to the owner and says, Hey, I'm going to clean this up for you for free. And Like, they're so grateful. A lot of them are the same thing that you just said, Angela. Maybe they got hurt. Maybe they're elderly and they just can't keep up and they don't know what to do, but they don't have money to to necessarily pay for maintenance. But the hard thing is, like, once it gets that overgrown, it's going to be a huge bill to get it cleaned up, even if then from there maintenance would not be as much. Right. So he goes and he cleans it all up for free and he records it. This is the part that entrances my mom. She watches the transformation. Yeah. And then what does he do? He offers them a cost-effective package for maintenance Mm -hmm. because he just took care of the big part for free. But what does that do? It ties that person to him. But not just that. Mm -hmm. Because he taped it and put it on YouTube, now other people in the area know who he is and they're like, yeah. Ooh, I want that guy because he's a good soul. I want him yeah. to come mow my lawn. Yeah. Cut and my grass. My, my daughter watches something similar. My oldest watches something similar. It's a lady. I think she might be outside of the United States, but she cleans people's houses for free. Um, But like people that have like the houses are awful, like beyond hoarder style. Oh boy. Awful. And a lot of times it is that sort of thing where it's, you know, a mom that's been struggling with depression or, Mm -hmm. you know, somebody that got really sick and couldn't keep up with the housework, things like that. And she, she does that for free. And then of course records it and puts it on YouTube. And she has, again, talking about what we were talking about earlier, affiliate marketing type things that she uses to kind of help bring in income for that. But yeah, so yard work, house cleaning, things yeah. like that. 
we're not saying you have to go off and do those things for free. That's just how those people chose to market their business, right. which for them is probably full time. But yeah. what I am saying is there are going to be, if you just, you know, there are going to be people, if you just drive around town, there are going to be people that need some help. Like, for example, um, we're getting our swing set and deck restained because it's been several years and it's just time. And the first thing they did is they came out a couple days ago and pressure washed everything. And it was the coolest thing. And then I just happened, like it's, it, you know how it happens? Like you see something and then you see it everywhere. I just happened to see online this guy talking about how he had bought a pressure washer. And then everybody in the neighborhood was asking to borrow it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like, okay, well, let's say you invest in a pressure washer and then you just go around and pressure wash people's houses a couple times a year. Make yeah. some extra money on the weekend just by pressure washing houses. Like, are you kidding me? All those spider webs and just the dirt and mm -hmm. the the yeah. mud daubers leaving their houses everywhere for us in our area. But um, just pressure washing it. Like, I, that way I don't have to go pull out the garden hose and yeah. the, the front deck – or sorry, the front porch and the back deck and all these different areas. Just pressure washing. But if I don't have to do the labor, cool. So that's why I'm saying yeah, like exactly. it doesn't have to be mowing or also the flower bed cleanup. I kid you not. Like like I've priced those things out before. A thousand dollars. Guess how much money yeah. we're talking about making an extra month? A thousand dollars. One day you just go pick weeds, uh, trim bushes, add some mulch. A thousand dollars one day's work. Yeah. I hired my niece to do that once when she was younger to come out and clean it because it was one of the years that when I had like really littles and I just could not get out there and the weeds had just completely taken over my front flower beds and they looked awful. So I hired her to come in and clean them up for me. And it was, you know, a lot of work for her, but it was good money. And so, yeah, that's people need things like that. And also there are some people that find it therapeutic to be outside gardening, picking weeds, using their hands in the dirt. Guess what? I'm not necessarily one of them. My mother <laughs> has the greenest thumb. She can grow anything. I can kill anything. It's a skill too. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, like I'm just saying like when you think something's easy, whether it's graphic design or um, making some bath salts or creating artwork or you think something or hanging around dogs or playing with flowers. If you think it's easy, there are people who think it's hard. And that has been yeah. really difficult for us to learn, Angela and I, as techies, yeah. because for us, it's like, just do the thing. But some people yeah. <laughs> like hear the word tech and they freeze. Mm -hmm. And so it's been it's been interesting to think about how different people have different interests and different skills and different natural talents. And it's yes. okay to monetize those natural talents. Yeah. I absolutely. remember in college thinking how easy I thought my psychology classes were. I'm like, I can't believe I'm paying to take this class. It's such a no-brainer. Like, I get it. Why do you have to explain a neuron to me seven million times? And then la later I found out, like, guess what? That doesn't make sense to everyone. <laughs> yeah. I ended up by chance minoring in psychology because I was like, these classes are easy. I'm going to take them as many as I can. Yeah. And I had like, I had no interest in being a psychologist. <laughs> right. I did. I the minor did it apparently. Uh, yeah, I did the same thing with like political science classes. I oh, had. God, I was no. like, <laughs> I was three credit hours away from like a full minor in poli sci by the time I got just because I took the classes because they were they seemed easy and I liked them. <laughs> yeah, and see, I would be like running in the opposite direction. Poli sci, no, no thanks. <laughs> Politics is one thing I don't even discuss with my husband. Like, that's an off-limits <laughs> topic for us. I've been yep. with this man for almost 20 years. We don't talk politics. <laughs> and yet I know Angela is my poli-sci friend. <laughs> yes. If I actually want to know something that's going on in the country, I'll be like, Angela, tell me about this. <laughs> Explain this to me. <laughs> Explain this to me. 
Because, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm not reading the news articles about it. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, it is. And it, it does kind of boil down to what you enjoy and what you like to do. And, you know, just because it's easy for you and you enjoy it doesn't mean it's easy for everybody and everybody enjoy it because there's a lot of things like Jesse was talking about some people hear tech and freeze up. I feel that way about copywriting. If anybody asks, like, can you just write a blurb for me to put on the website? No, I can't. I'm not. Mm -mm. Nope. I don't write. That's not a thing I do. <laughs> but That's there are people out there that there are people out there that it comes really naturally and mm -hmm. easy to them and they enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like there's nothing wrong with monetizing those natural talents and interests that you have. I think one of the main points of this episode is to let you know that you can monetize those natural talents. You never thought you could, but you can. Yeah. And there's always people out there willing to pay for it. You just have to find them, which that can be the difficult part. But hey, right. that's not what this episode's about. This episode's just about the possibilities of what you could do. Yes. And especially in today's world and post-pandemic with so many online things, um, and so many access points to people online, it's a lot easier than ever to find because you're not necessarily limited to just like the little group of people that you know in real life. Yeah, for sure. The The world is wide open right now. Um, okay. I will also say that our list is not exhaustive by any means. No. There are so many other things you could do that I just didn't even bother mentioning them because... I didn't want to. These are the ones I wanted to talk about. <laughs> I'm going to admit <laughs> that. I just didn't want to. <laughs> um, but also, look, our episode's already over 40 minutes, and so we didn't yeah. want to take up too much more of your time. But it's definitely a topic we're passionate about and we enjoy talking about. So if you are doing something that you're just kind of doing on the side to make a little extra money every month, that whether it's something we mentioned on the list or not – um, let us know on Instagram at Marketing Moms Podcast. We're really interested. And if there's anything we can do to tag you, you know, I'm trying really hard not to say pimp out your business, but pimp out your business. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> we want to uh, tag you and and let and others share. know about you and yeah, share yeah. <laughs> how cool you are. <laughs> Uh, let us know. We're happy to do so. We are all about supporting you in any way we can, even if it's just mentioning you on our Instagram. So yep. reach out to us at Marketing Moms Podcast, and we will see you next week. Thank you for joining us today. We're so honored this is where you chose to spend your time. If this episode helped you in some way, please share it with another mom who needs to hear it. We're in this together. And if you're ready for next steps, free goodies, and more, head over to marketingmomspodcast.com. We'll see you next week.